Hello, my friends. How are you doing? It is always a good day in AI land. And today I'm going to show you how to create vectors with AI in color, black and white, line art vectors, how to get everything installed and set up. And of course, the best paid and free software to elevate your vector game. It's going to be a fun, fun time. Let's get started. The install is very easy, my friends. Here we have the GitHub page and you want to copy up here the address of the GitHub page. Go over to to Stable Diffusion and here you want to go to the extensions tab and then to install from URL. Paste that in here and click on the install button. It only would take a second and then you go to the installed tab. Here you click on check for updates and then you click on apply and restart UI. But there is a second step we need to do here before we can actually use the extension. Until you see pot race for non-windows. Now this also has a windows inclusion here. When you go down here for dependencies, it says here Windows 64. So you want to download that zip file. Once you've downloaded the zip file and unpacked it, in there is of course the pot race folder. So you want to open that up and in there you see the pot race access. So you want to copy this file. Go to your automatic 1111 folder, go to the extensions folder, go to the vector studio folder and in there you either have a bin folder already or you want to create that bin folder. And then simply paste that Pottrace exit in here. After all of this is done, we are ready and the fun can begin. So you will see here a Vector Studio tab and in there we have a vector editor. We don't actually want to use that. What you want to do, of course, is to create vector images with AI. So you go back to text to image. You want to scroll down here that says script and here you also have a Vector Studio choice. This is what we need. When we look here, you have a lot of different visual styles. Now this will render your image in these different styles. And it is really important to point out here that when you choose these styles, this will highly change the output of the model that you have chosen. So this has a huge influence on your results. If you don't want to have that, you can choose non prompt only and then you will get the result that your model is creating. I have some suggestions here for you. You can either download different checkpoint models from Civit AI or textual inversions or there are even different LoRa's for your users. Now when you download checkpoints one important thing here is that you check for the description here and how to use it. In this case, this one says you need both the checkpoint and the YAML file. This means first you download your checkpoint model file directly into automatic 1111 into the models folder into the stable diffusion folder where you all of your other models are. Then you go back to the page and down here it says this checkpoint includes a config file. So you want to click on that. You will download this in the exact same folder automatic 1111 models stable diffusion. Once both of them are downloaded you can click here on that blue icon and now you have here your model list and there is the color book model. Now for textual inversions and LoRa's this works a little bit different. So when you download a textual inversion this is going into your embeddings folder inside of automatic 1111 and if you're downloading a LoRa this is going into your automatic 1111 folder into models and there into LoRa. Now here's how to use them inside of automatic 1111. On the right side you have here this violet pink button. You click on that. There you have the textual inversions. If you don't see them you click here on refresh to load them again. And then for the LoRa's again you do the same thing. Click on refresh and you can load them. Now to add them you want to click either in your prompt box or negative prompt box because you can see here for example bad artist anime. This is a negative embedding so that would go down here into the negative prompt box and for the positive ones like for example the color book style that we just downloaded you click up here in the prompt field you click and this is going to be added. You can see that this is just called by the name. 
Now this is different for the LoRa's. When you want to load a LoRa, you click simply on the LoRa you want to have and you can see that this is in brackets, but also at the end it has a weight. Now most LoRa's will be overtrained a little bit, so you want to reduce that to, for example, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. But of course you can also try to use it with one because some of the LoRa's are actually trained for the right weight. Now you can see here you can get some pretty fantastic results like these winter forest scenes and they are also converted into vector. Now I want to point out two things here. First of all, when we look at the vector, you can see here in the preview that this has these white patches in here. And then of course you can't see a lot of the rest because I'm using dark mode. Now if you don't want to have these white patches here, you want to scroll down and here you have white is opaque. You want to uncheck that and you want to render that again. Now the thing here is there is no vector or recreation button here so you can automatically render that again so what you want to do here is to render until you find something that looks good and then you want to use the seed from that and render that specific image again with your new settings down here you will need to use that often as an option because also down here you have the threshold and this defines what and how much is included of your line art in the vector version. So when I render this again, I now have the individual image. When I click here in PNG, you see nothing because now the white patches have been removed. So when I open this up in an extra tab, you can actually see the creation. And this is actually a vector file, which of course also means when you go to your output folder, there will be tons and tons of PNGs, vector files, and maybe also transparent PNG files, because that is another amazing option of this extension. You see down here, you have the choice for transparent PNG. And what this will do is that it will create for you of course, the normal PNG, then the vector version, either in SVG or PDF. And then on top of that, also a transparent PNG. So you have lots of options here. Now, of course, there's some things I need to point out to you here. This extension is not exactly good with small details because after all, it's not a rendering a vector file. It is converting a PNG into a vector file. And there, of course, is not really an exact and really good process for that. Another thing is here that is very important. This conversion into vector is only black and white. There is no gradients there. There is no colors there. So if you want to level up your game, I want to show you other options on how you can actually do that. So for that, sadly, we have to turn off our script for this automatic generation of vector files. And instead, we are just going to use our normal model. So I'm switching over here, for example, for deliberate version two, because I want to show you that this also works with other models. And here we are now creating logos of a lion hat, so a logo style. I want to show you what I write as the prompt. So first of all, I'm going to write flat color. Then I want to have a modern multicolor logo of a lion hat. And you can actually also define the colors in here. So I'm going to say brown and yellow and black. And I want to have it on a white background. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So here I have rendered four versions for you. You can see that one of them has kind of a white background and has a pretty cool design. So we can actually use that. And just to show you that the color choices actually have effect. Now I wrote blue, violet and black on a white background. And these are the designs I got as a result. So that is pretty amazing. Now, of course, the big question here is how can we convert this into a vector file? So the first option I want to show you here is from Adobe. This is a web based solution, but don't worry, even though you do need an account, you only need a free account to do that. So you simply select the file of your choice from your drive and it is swiftly converted into a vector file for you. Now, sadly, this doesn't have any settings here, so you get what you get, but it is very fast, it is free and it is easy. So what about software options? Now, first of all, there is Affinity Designer 2 and that is pretty good. It is also affordable and it's a one time payment. It's not a subscription, but it has the downside that as far as I know, there is no way in the software to convert an image into a vector file automatically. 
However, if you do have an Adobe subscription already, there is Illustrator. And inside of Illustrator is actually a way to automatically convert the PNG file into a vector. So select the PNG file that you have opened, go over here to properties on the right side, and there you can see that it says image trace. You want to click on that, and then you also want to click on this little icon here, and this will open up these settings here. And here you have different choices. For example, in this case, we could use low fidelity, which gives us something that is rather close to our original. You can also choose logo over here, but you can see that the eyes are missing and other details. You can, however, reduce the noise and play around with the other settings to get back more quality. Or another thing you can do here is, for example, choose sketched art, in which case we're getting a black and white version, but I would say that it looks pretty good. When you found the version you want to keep on the right side here, you have an expand button. When you click on that, this is then applied as a vector version. So now you can see also all these outlines. So there's a lot of different shapes in here, but this also now gives us the ability when we click on these shapes, for example, to delete these parts from the background. So now we actually have a logo design. It doesn't have a background in it. But what if you don't want to pay any money? Well, there is also Inkscape, which is a completely free open source tool that you can download and install on your computer. After you've installed everything, you have the Ink View and Inkscape. And once you have started the software, go to the top left for File and Open. Again, find the file you want to convert and simply open that up. You have this little dialog here. Simply click on OK. Click on the image. So you have selected that layer. And then you go to Path and to to trace bitnet. For this, you get here this tab on the right side. You want to drag this out because you have a preview here. And again, you have multiple choices up here on how you want to do that. The single scan will only give you a black and white version of that. The multicolor version will give you more colors in here. Right now, this looks like it is black and white. But this is because the detection mode is set to brightness steps. So you want to switch this over to colors. And now you can see that you have the colors in here. Now you will realize that this doesn't have all of the colors in here because right now it is set to eight scans. But it is important to notice here that the more scans you add here, you get more colors, but you also get a much more complex vector file after that. So instead, what you might want to do here is to have a simpler vector file and then simply change these colors, for example, for the eyes and the nose afterwards. The cool thing here is we also have a remove background option. One thing I would suggest you do here before you apply this is to click here on stack because this is going to layer all of the different colors on top of each other. But that also means you don't have any gaps inside of your vector version. Once you are happy with your result, you simply click on apply. And after a short while, this has generated for you the vector version. On the right side, you will also see that you have layers and objects. Now, if you don't see that, you want to go up here to the left to layers and then layers and objects or shift control L. With all of the layers, you see here the paths of your vector file and below that you see the image. You can hide the image and this will reveal to us that the background removal wasn't exactly successful. So that means one of these paths is your background. So you want to click on that to select it. You can see, oh, it's this path here. So you can either hide that or you can delete that. Let's hide it for now. Click on the background somewhere else. And now you can see that we actually have our vector file with a removed background. That looks already a lot better. So now that you have all these fantastic options, please share them in my Facebook group, on my Discord, and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.